Hello, welcome to today's lecture. In this lecture, we're going to do secondary hemostasis. Let's get started. So, for secondary hemostasis, we're going to go through two things, which is the clotting factor and the coagulation cascade. So, if you remember, in our primary hemostasis lecture, um, the end product of primary hemostasis is that weak platelet plug, right? And there are four steps, which is ways of constriction, um, addition, activation, and aggregation. And aggregation is the last step of the formation of the, that weak platelet plug. And that weak platelet plug is platelets bound together by a receptor called GP2B3A. It is GP2B3A via a plasma protein known as fibrinogen. Okay. Now this is weak and the blood clot needs to be strong, right? So that more blood won't flow out. And the function of secondary hemostasis is to make that blood clot more stable and more stronger, okay? And how it does that is converting fibrinogen into fibrin, okay? For now, let's say that fibrinogen is known as factor 1 and fibrin is factor 1A, okay? We'll go through it, why they're known, why they're called that, but I'm just saying fibrinogen will be converted into fibrin, which is 1 to 1A. Okay, and that is basically secondary hemostasis. So let's go through the diagram of um, coagulation cascade now. Our professor also mentioned it as clotting cascade. It's both the same thing. It's just converting fibrinogen into fibrin. Okay, so this is the coagulation cascade. It looks very complicated, but if we go through it step by step, it's quite easy. So you could see there's the extrinsic pathway, and intrinsic pathway, and the common pathway. And you could see these numbers, 3, 7, uh, 12, 11, 9, and 8. And you could see 13, 2, and 1. So, as I said, secondary hemostasis is about conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin, right? And I said it was 1 and 1A, right? You could see I wrote it down here. And this is the formation of a more stable and more stronger uh, blood clot, right? And you can see after the formation of a fibrin, there's something that forms, which is the cross-linked fibrin. And this is that more stable and more stronger uh, blood clot. This is the main process of uh, secondary hemostasis, and for that to happen, you need all of this. And this is the coagulation cascade. So let's go through them. Before that, we have to know what these numbers are. These numbers are known as clotting factors, okay? As I wrote here, clotting factors. Clotting factors are proteins, okay? So, they're proteins that are made in the liver. As I said, those number uh, 7, there was 12, 11, there was uh, 8, and there was 9, right? All of those numbers, those are no, we, we associate them as factor 3, factor 4, factor 5, okay? Like that. All of them are made in the liver except for two. Factor 3 and factor 8, they're not made in the liver. They're made in something known as endothelial cells. Remember, endothelial cells is lines the blood vessel walls, right? I believe factor 8 is made in the liver's endothelial cells, okay? So... They are proteins that are made in the liver, except factor 3 and factor 8. And these factors, or these four proteins, they require activation, okay? For activation, or for getting activated, they require activating substance, okay? That substance can be tissue factor, or subendothelial collagen. Tissue factor, we'll go through it, and you know that subendothelial collagen uh, in my primary hemostasis lecture. We know that after there's a uh, there's a wound cut or uh, there's a damage to the skin, you could see there will be an exposed subendothelial collagen, right? That is basically uh, that subendothelial collagen. It requires a preceding factor, an activation substance which requires a preceding factor. We'll go through that. It requires thrombin, which is factor two A. Okay, we'll go through that. Don't worry. And some of the factors to be activated, it requires calcium and a phospholipid layer, which comes from either platelets or tissue factor, okay? I highlighted in the coagulation cascade, 
uh, as a star like this okay as a red star wherever you see the red star below a factor that means that it requires calcium and phospholipid layer okay and that is required for factor 2 7 9 and 10 okay so for these factors to be activated it requires calcium and a phospholipid layer so let's just go through in 10 seconds about requiring activation these are proteins that are made in liver except factor 3 and 8 which are made in endothelial cells they they require activation and it can be activated by tissue factor subendothelial collagen or a preceding factor or thrombin which is 2a 2a or calcium and phospholipid layer which activates these factors so let's go through the coagulation cascade so as you as i said this is the end product right a cross-link fibrin so first let's go through extrinsic pathway for extrinsic pathway you could see there's a factor 7 that goes into 7a so now whenever a factor is activated there's a a the letter a that will appear okay for example factor 10 activates it gets activated and it's named 10a okay any factor that is activated it will become that factor plus the letter a okay factor 12 when it gets activated it will become 12a factor 11 11a factor 9 9a okay so in an extrinsic pathway factor 7 becomes 7a why is it called an extrinsic pathway extrinsic means if you look at the english definition it means something that is not present within okay if you look in a test tube and you take some blood sample in a test tube and you want the blood to clot it can't go through extrinsic pathway because for extrinsic pathway you need something known as tissue factor okay tissue factor is not present in the blood itself it is produced by cells so if you remember in our primary hemostasis lecture whenever there's a cut in our skin or anywhere and when the blood vessels uh they cut open we remember that the endothelial cells they'll they'll be damaged right there's damaged endothelial cells these endothelial cells that are damaged they produce or they secrete tissue factor okay and this tissue factor is known as tissue factor 3 okay now if you take the blood in a test tube remember i said if you take the blood in the test tube there is no endothelial cells so nobody will produce or secrete a uh, tissue factor right so that's why it's known as an extrinsic pathway that tissue factor is not present in the blood all the time it's only present or it's it's only available when there is a damaged endothelial cells right so that is why it is an extrinsic pathway um substance that is required that is not present in the blood it needs to be produced or secreted okay extrinsic pathway is activation of factor 7 and you could see as i said that is the uh the star that i mentioned right it requires calcium and phospholipid okay factor 7 into factor 7a by the help of tissue factor 3 okay and remember tissue factor 3 is produced by uh, damaged endothelial cells let's write that down here now this factor 7a as i said whenever a factor is activated a letter a will appear for it okay now this factor 7a it activates factor 10 which is part of the common pathway we'll not go through the common pathway first we'll first go through intrinsic extrinsic and then we'll finally end it with common pathway so now we know that extrinsic pathway is just substance that is required that is not present in the blood okay uh tissue factor is not present in the blood it needs to be secreted and it's secreted by damaged endothelial cells okay now let's look at intrinsic pathway intrinsic is the opposite of extrinsic okay so it means that it's already present within meaning all the um all the substance that is required for in intrinsic pathway is already present in the blood now you might say that 
subendothelial collagen, which is required for the activation of factor 12, okay, I wrote it here, you might say that subendothelial collagen, it might not be present in the test tube that we, uh, that we took as an example, right? We take a blood and it want, we want it to clot. It will still go through intrinsic pathway. Why? Subendothelial collagen, it has a negative charge, okay? And that negative charge is required for the activation of uh, 12, factor 12A. Now, if you remember, I said we have a test tube, right? And we have blood. So this is the blood, okay? This subendothelial collagen, it is negatively charged, okay? Let's do it in blue. It's negatively charged. And that negative charge is required for the activation of factor 12, okay? I don't know why I erased that. Yeah. It's required for the activation of factor 12, okay? That negative charge is present on the test tube, on the glass of the test tube. The glass of the test tube is negatively charged. It's always negatively charged. And that's why it's intrinsic. It's, it's present within the blood too. So that negative charge, it can activate factor 12 into 12A. And as I said, in clotting factors, the, you can activate it by a preceding factor, right? And this is that preceding factor. Look, once 12 is fact activated into 12A, that 12A activates factor 11 into 11A. That is the preceding factor, right? That 11A activates 9 into 9A, okay? And look, even thrombin activates some of the uh, clotting factors, but we'll go to thrombin later. So, for um, extrinsic pathway, it was factor 3 and factor 7, right? For intrinsic pathway, it's 8, 9, 11, 12, okay? 10 is skipped because 10 is part of the common pathway, okay? Now, how do you remember this? We can remember extrinsic pathway as 3 plus 7 equals 10, right? 3 plus 7 in equals 10, right? Factor 10. For intrinsic pathway, you just have to remember it's 8, 9, 11, 12, okay? So 8 to 12, and you skip 10 because it's part of the common pathway. So intrinsic pathway is factors or substances that are already present within uh, the blood. You don't need anything to be secreted or, or produced, okay? It's all of the substances that are required for intrinsic pathway to start is already in the blood. When factor 9A and 8A, they are uh, secreted, it also helps in the activation of factor 10, okay? Now, let's go into the common pathway. Common pathway is activation, first the activation of factor 10 into 10A, okay? And 10A, it activates something called prothrombin, which is factor 2, into thrombin. Thrombin is a very, very important substance. Why? Thrombin accelerates okay remember the word let me write it down here thrombin accelerates the coagulation cascade okay so it can be used as an again activation factor it can accelerate uh, 7 into activating 7a it can accelerate 11 into 11a it can accelerate 8 into 8a and look even it can even accelerate some other uh, factors that are required for the formation of cross-linked fibrin. So thrombin is a very, very important substance, okay? And that's required for accelerating coagulation cascade, okay? Remember that word. So thrombin is required for accelerating the coagulation cascade. You could even see 5 is activated into 5A, okay? And there's 2 into 2A. And, and that thrombin also activates 1 into 1A, which is fibrinogen into fibrin. Now, how do you remember this? <laughs> so, we can remember this by, this 5 is also important, okay? 5 into 5A. We can remember this by 1 times 2 times 5 equals 10, okay? That's how I basically remember it. 1 times 2 times 5 equals 10. 10. 
this is the fibrinogen into fibrin. Two is uh, prothrombin into thrombin, right? And five is factor five activating into factor five A. So one times two times five equals 10. And that's how you can remember basically one, two, five equals 10. Okay. And that is basically uh, the coagulation cascade. Extrinsic pathway, remember, these are substances. Uh, for this pathway, the substances that are required, they are not present in the um, blood. They, they need to be produced or secreted because tissue factor, it's only secreted when the endothelial cells are damaged. And that is required uh, for the activation of 7 into 7A, okay? Intrinsic pathway means substances are already present within, meaning whatever is required for intrinsic pathway, it's already present in the blood. Nothing has to be secreted, okay? And it activates 12 into 12A, 12 11 into 11A, 9 into 9A, and 8 into 8A, okay? You can remember it's 8, 9, 11, 12, 8 to 12, but you skip 10 because 10 is part of... Uh, the common pathway and you can remember this extrinsic pathway 3 plus 7 equals 10 okay and that is 10 basic mathematics <laughs> and to remember the common pathway you can remember as 1 times 2 times 5 equals 10 okay 1 times 2 times 5 equals 10 1 multiplied by 2 times 5 equals 10 right and that was the coagulation cascade. It's very, very easy to understand. You just have to remember uh, these factors and what it activates, okay? And after that, it's pretty simple. You can even see uh, it, it, thrombin even activates uh, factor 13 into 13A. And as I said, thrombin, it's very helpful because it basically accelerates the entire coagulation cascade, okay? So yeah. At the end, there's a cross-linked fibrin that is formed, and that is the stronger and more stable blood clot, okay? If you have any questions, you could DM me to my Instagram page at dsr.manav, at dsr.manav. Um, the link also will be in the description and comment section. And yeah, any questions, just hit me up. Uh, I'll answer them as soon as possible. And yeah, this was... Secondary hemostasis. Bye-bye.